All right, everyone. Thanks very much for joining me for another episode of Get Ready. And with me today is uh, someone who uh, is kind of special to me. I, he's had a life that's punctuated with extraordinary experiences uh, as a private pilot, a pianist, an organist, an emergency medical technician, mental health counselor, executive director of a national nonprofit organization, entrepreneur, consultant, world traveler, husband, author, and not least of all, the man who introduced me to my wife. So, um, and now he's got a fantastic new book called The Power of Promise. And uh, so let me introduce you to my dear, dear friend, Ken Misesian. How you doing, Ken? Thank you, Brad. I'm doing great. And uh, that probably is the greatest accomplishment that I've ever had, <laughs> is uh, having introduced you and Christy and having had it uh, having had it be such a successful and extraordinary relationship. And we've loved watching you grow uh, together and grow with your kids. And uh, it's been an extraordinary friendship that you and I have shared. And it's great to be here with you now. Yeah, that's uh, very, very grateful for uh, when we met back in our, our struggling acting days. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, it seems like a lifetime ago because it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Several lifetimes ago, it actually <laughs> was. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, and here we are now uh, yeah. consulting around the world. Um, yeah, with being, people. being and, grown um, up. <laughs> <tap there>. <laughs> 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 and, and I love that you have taken, uh, you know, so much of what you have learned, uh, through your various incarnations, yeah. but, uh, you know, but especially in your work, working with all kinds of professionals and different companies and put it into this book, The Power of Promise. So let me start out by asking you, um, do you think that the relationship that a company forms with their customers has any uh, importance? <laughs> well, some. <laughs> And I'm glad you actually used the word relationship because a lot of businesses don't see themselves as being in relationship with the people with whom they do business. And the fact is, it is all relationship. Everything is relationship. And uh, as I was writing the book uh, and discussing some of the some of the experiences that I've had, what I always knew really came to be present in my writing and in my speaking about it, which is, this is like being in relationship with a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, a partner, uh, particularly the longer you do business with a brand, the more invested you become and the closer you feel to them. This is you know, obviously what a brand wants to get to is to have someone like me or you or whomever be a brand advocate for whatever it is. We go nowhere else, but not only that, we're going to bring other people with us and we're going to tell everybody, this is the only place we'd go. This is the only product we'd buy. This is the only uh, consultant I would ever see. This is the only you know, sh uh, psychologist uh, I would go and, and talk to. That's, that is worth more than anything you can ever buy is to have a satisfied customer that becomes an advocate for your company. And that is a relationship. The great thing is that if you can get to that, uh, you, you've got gold in your pocket. Uh, the challenge is that you now have a relationship that's operating at such a level that uh, you need to not only maintain it, but continually enhance it. And if that person feels betrayed by that brand, it's not just, ah, I'll fly a different airline or I'll go to a different restaurant or I'll see somebody else. It's like, you betrayed me. <laughs> this, this is like your spouse, you know, uh, uh, doing something that just really feels um, horrible. And, and that's, that's the cautionary tale in all of this is that we are in relationship one with another in general, but particularly when you're in business that makes or breaks businesses. It was interesting because in your book, you mentioned a couple of different stories right towards the beginning yeah. about how that happened. <laughs> Coincidentally, perhaps, that <laughs> it, it happened to me in just the last several weeks where uh, we've been going to the same dentist for uh, well over a decade. And there was an appointment where 
I felt pretty dismissed. And I actually went onto their online forum and made a comment about that and didn't get a response. And they no longer have my business. After a decade of them taking care of our family, it's like, okay. And so it was was very interesting in having been reading your book (laughs) and all of this about that and recognizing, yeah, there is a, there's a betrayal. It's like, because they had taken it, taken my uh, business for granted. Right. Absolutely. And I, I think the, if the, the, the subtitle is how to win and keep customers by telling the truth about your brand, right? So from my perspective in, in my daily life, but in working, with, uh, in working with companies, it's really helping them understand that their brand is a promise, whether or not they know it, just by virtue of the fact that you, once you launch into the wild, as I call it, once you launch your business, open your consulting practice, do, do whatever you're doing. Uh, you're making promises. You're making promises by what you say. You're making promises by how you look. You're making promises in all sorts of ways. And if you're not the one who is being cause for what that promise is, other people are going to take it upon themselves to make some assumptions, <laughs> right? And then they're going to be testing you. Are you living up to the promise or aren't you? And you want that test to be happening on your own terms to the extent that you can control that. You really want to understand that your brand is a promise. You want to understand what that promise is that you're making. And then you want to make sure that whatever you're doing in terms of the customer experience that you're creating, you're reinforcing that that promise is true, that you're keeping your word time after time after time relentlessly. That's how brands grow and and grow brilliantly. And so the experience that you just recounted uh, being with someone for a while, having a bad experience, that's bad enough. But I think as we all know, stuff happens from time to time. It's how you deal with it, right? It's how, it's how you pick up the pieces and put it back together again and make somebody feel great. And the fact that your complaint went uh, unanswered, uh, that's that's textbook of what you shouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> This would be poor customer service. This would be indeed. Textbook, as you said. <laughs> this would be indeed. And it, and it goes to our point of relationship, right? Because if you were in a relationship and uh, somebody said to you, your partner said to you, that really hurt me when you did that. You know, I, I, I felt insulted. Uh, the response you'd want is, man, I'm really sorry. I, I didn't realize that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, it, it, it happens all the time. And it goes in, you uh, stated one, well, deliberately one point, but it's throughout, is that uh, brand is emotional. It is. It's emotional and it's experiential. And and my position, which uh, I've always held, is that human beings are collectors of experiences. When we talk about our lives, and, and now that we're of a certain age, Brad, uh, <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Yeah, <laughs> I am. Uh, uh, With every passing year, I realize that, you know, we are collectors of experience. The the things that I look forward to are new experiences I'm going to have either with my husband, with with friends, with family members. Uh, And the things that I recall are the great experiences that I have had. And just, you know, in having this conversation with you and thinking back to our time in Los Angeles and the experiences that we had there, it's those moments that come up. And people often forget that brand, it's, it's certainly not just a logo. And it's certainly not your name or a tagline or whatever it happens to be. It really is the totality of the experience that you're creating for your prospects and then ultimately for your customers. It's emotional, it's felt, and it's experiential. It's based on the customer experience. And that experience is so important because it's that ongoing test of whether or not you're living up to your word. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, uh, A friend of mine was recalling a story that uh, she had experienced uh, back at Disneyland a couple decades ago. Her brother is a special needs kid and the family had some trepidation about going to a really public place and how would he be accepted? How would he be welcomed in? And when they got there, the team at Disney greeted him like he was a king. And and it kind of chokes me up just thinking about her recollection of that story. She only made it about halfway through before she started crying, as did the rest of the people who were there, because they showed up 
in such a way that created this emotional bond that has lasted to this day. 20 years later, her family still goes back to Disneyland every year for a vacation. Mm -hmm. They literally fly across country when they could go virtually anywhere else. But it's there that they choose to go because that experiential emotional bond was so tight and so good that there's no place they'd rather be. And that's the power of a brand well done, well executed, well delivered. Yeah. And it, it seems almost uh, obvious, but for when someone is going into business to choose something that they're really in alignment with so that they, the, the brand that they develop really is a, um, there's integrity there as opposed to what do people want? What can I fake? <laughs> and, and keep up this pretense to keep customers. And, uh, you know, it's like somebody who's, who's living a lie and, and always trying to remember, okay, what did, I, <laughs> where did I say I was last night? <laughs> and, and all of that. It's, it's a great point. And one of the, one of the issues that I stress is that, uh, the extent to which you can break down the walls of the silos that we can tend to put ourselves in. This is me at home. This is we, me with my spouse. This is me with my friends. Here I am at work. Here I am with my colleagues. Here I am with my customers, right? And we construct all these different silos, which oftentimes don't communicate with each other. And it can be a challenge because you'll never be as successful uh, as you can be, as you could be. Uh, if you are living this siloed life and if you're able to break those walls down and who you are at home is the same as who you are at work because you're a person, like you said, living in integrity, living in alignment with who you are, then man, a life becomes easier because you don't have to remember who you're trying to be. Uh, but B, because you have integrity across all aspects of your life, it flows. It just flows simply. And, you know, I point out that one of the most important things you can do in this whole process as a business owner or somebody who just cares about the company that you're at, start with yourself. You know, what's your personal brand? And the simple way to think about that is what can people count on you for? You know, just what can people count on Brad for in life? And, uh, to that point, too, we hear a lot about work-life balance, work-life harmony. I, I don't like really either of those terms. Work-life harmony is probably better, but I, I wrote a blog a few weeks ago about it's just one life. We're, we're, we have a life, and we have a life at home. We have a life at work. We have a life with family. We have a life with friends. But it's just one singular life, and our work really should be integrating who we are, the totality of who we are into all those different aspects and not trying to pretend that there's something different that occurs in one place that occurs in the other. Right. Otherwise we could break it down completely in terms of, okay, here's my work life. And now here's my sit in front of the TV life. Now here's my <laughs> chef life when I'm making dinner and <laughs> exactly. break it down to all the different roles that we play throughout. The, here's my, right. my teeth self. <laughs> <laughs> I like him a lot. He's really into hygiene. Yeah. That's a good one. Very detail oriented. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I just, you know, I invite people to really explore that. And, and it's, you know, there's a, there's a cliche phrase, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And yet cliches tend to be around because they're true. Uh, and, and so if you start there, you start with yourself and you start with what people can count on you for, and you start paying attention. Like, what do I say during the day? What kind of promises do I make? Do I have any intention of keeping them? <laughs> And, and, you know, for most of us, it's not malicious. It's not like I'm going to lie to you because I think it's fun, yeah. but we just say a lot of stuff, you know, during the course of our day, things just come out of our mouths almost as a matter of rote. And so the book is an invitation to, uh, to be mindful to a degree. Yeah. Really? Is that what you're going to fulfill on? No, I just I had no intention of calling him back, but it would have been rude just to have said thanks and bye. So I keep the possibility that I might call him because I might on Sunday, yeah. but, but I have no intention of it. Right. And, and knowing that, that how much people, how much we appreciate when we're clear on, on that promise, 
you know, there are plenty of businesses that we may, um, you know, we may shop at or whatever, knowing that, that it's clear, like, uh, you know, there are times when I'm traveling and, uh, and I'll go to a fast food restaurant and the fast food restaurant is not promising some luxury meal. <laughs> it no. is not, it's, it, so it's not a matter of if I'm in business, I have to promise the moon, uh, the moon and the stars. And, and then, but it, saying, here's what I do. This is what I do clean and simple. And, and I'm going to deliver on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what they're delivering is, a, a, a hot meal in three minutes or less for seven bucks. God bless you. Do it every time. Do it well. Do it with a smile. You know, make sure that people can count on that. You're a hundred percent right. This doesn't mean that you have to provide a luxe experience. Not, not at all. And I think, you know, Brad, you've, you've pointed out something where people may get tripped up. Like if, if I can't provide something that's so elevated, then who cares? And the answer is just do what you say. And if it is as simple as a fast food experience where you know what you can count on, those fries are going to taste the same every time. And I'm just looking forward to how they taste. And I know I can get out of there for less than, you know, a, a 10 spot. Happy days, man. That's good stuff in and of itself. And that, that is a key to remembering uh, what this is really all about. It's, it's what you say and it's what you deliver. And if people know they can count on that, that's great. You didn't promise that they'd be greeted by a maitre d' when they walked in. And, and you don't have to. Yeah, it's honoring, uh, honoring what you have to offer so that you don't feel a need to promise more than you can deliver on. Yeah. Absolutely. And one of the simple ways to do that you know, whatever level of, of service you're providing, uh, A, to be honest about it, but B, uh, the, the third chapter of the book is about mapping. And I, I recommend that people just take time to actually walk through your customer's experience, not talk it through, but like actually walk through it. And if you can physically do that, if you have a physical place of business, what's it like to walk up and look at this place? You know, what's it like to walk in the door, look up, look down. It's like, Dear God, there's a lot of cobwebs up there. We should probably clean that. People might be looking up from time to time. Uh, but walk through the experience of what it's like. If you're an online business, have you ever tried ordering from yourself? What's that experience like? It's like, wow, spinning wheel of death when I get to the you know, purchase. That's probably not good. Uh, so actually map what it's like by, by taking a walk through that experience and then being able to go back and clean it up uh, and then to always be reaching out to your customers. What could we do better? What, you know, what was, what was great for you? But as importantly, what could we do better? I mentioned the success part because uh, some of the clients I've had, uh, they've gotten really good at finding out where they've failed and cleaning that stuff up, but they don't know why they're succeeding. It's like, why do you think this area is successful? Why do you think that product is selling well? I don't know. It just is. We don't want to mess with it. It's like, no, you don't want to mess with it, but it might be nice to gather some data so you could do more of it or you could do it bigger or you could expand it. And so I'd say, you know, in all those cases, once you figure out what's working, try to get to why so you could do more of it. Yes. The, the question of why and uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Simon Sinek says, start with why. <laughs> yeah. And he's, you know, I quote him in my book. It's a, it's, like you said, none of this is, none of this is rocket science. It really isn't. It's pretty basic stuff, but it's stuff that I think it's easy to forget, particularly if in an entrepreneurial business where every moment of every day is, you know, make it to the next moment and you're in startup mode and hopefully things are going great uh, and stuff is pouring in. You just want to keep up or you're watching your burn rate and it's a lot higher than you ever anticipated it would be and you're in panic mode. Uh, the book is really a call to action to just take a breath, step back, do it systematically, get really clear on where you're going. And I map out a process for figuring out your brand. I map out a process for uh, strategic thinking and, and understanding a strategy for your brand as well, for your company. Uh, and these are just foundational things. You know, build a solid foundation, build a great foundation, 
And then once you have those in place, then you've got that freedom to just like be in, in your business. And that's where the fun is for me. You know, when I, when I help companies get to that place where it's like, we don't have to think about that anymore. It's on page 23 of the operations manual. Anybody could open it up and do it. Done. You know, you get to that point, you know, you've got the foundation handled then you can just be present, you know, with your customers, you can be present with your, with your staff and, and you can actually have fun in business. Which is an awesome thing to do. Which is a super awesome <laughs> thing to do. It's just the best if you could like be having fun, like you get out of bed in the morning and you're excited about going to work or flipping open the computer or making a phone call because you're having a great time. That's you know, to, to do what you love, to work with great people, make a living at it. Um, good life. That's a good life, man. It is indeed. Well, I thank you so much for, uh, for sharing the insights. Thank you for, um, you know, put it in a book in, in, in a simple and easy to read way for, Thanks. <laughs> for folks to, you know, cause especially when people are starting the business, it can be daunting, but what I love is that it's, it's great information, even for people who have been at it for a while, but may have lost sight of, uh, you know, I should probably get a copy from my former dentist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Give me his address. I'll send him one. <laughs> you know, I'll mention too, Brad, just from a practical perspective, um, the book opens every, every chapter opens with a personal story just to give people a, a, a sense of, where I'm coming from and relates to the chapter at hand. But every chapter ends with a little bullet point summary and like seven things you can do right then in your company to put it into practice. So it's, it's uh, an easy read. It's a good read. It's 140 pages, um, but it's I also, appreciate that. <laughs> it's also, well, everybody's got, you know, there's a lot of competition for our time. Exactly. So at the end of every chapter, seven quick things that you could do, with your team to put that chapter into into practice right there. Yeah, and that's and that's the great thing that it's it's not just theory; it's it's actionable items to uh, you know to make a difference and and not just in business but personally too. Yeah, <laughs> this would be a great guide for people doing online dating. <laughs> I, I I just so don't people can count on you for. I, I I got an email the other day from someone saying. Hi, Mr. Yates. Um, I just wanted to let you know that somebody on Match.com is using your photos. <laughs> Someone had taken a bunch of my photos off Facebook and sent it to this woman, and I, I was flattered. It's like <laughs> that's that's really nice. That's that you really were... great. <laughs> Congratulations, first. Yeah. <laughs> Second, get your identity back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and send this guy a copy of The Power of Promise. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the funny thing was he had sent photos of other people too. So it was like, oh, get your story goodness. straight, dude. My goodness. <laughs> Anyhow, um, as always, it is, it is such a great delight spending time with you. Uh, you. I wish that we lived closer like we used to. I know. Um, but uh, so, so glad we had this opportunity and, and to be able to share this new book with folks. And, uh, and all the great information that you have been compiling and sharing with people, yeah. you know, on one-to-one -one consultancy levels and now being able to put that out to benefit a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure and, uh, and a delight, which is a, a lovely thing. Yeah. <laughs>